Hello and welcome to another episode of Dynamo in Alias. I'm Gigi and today I'll talk about a very common problem with Dynamo in Alias, which is how do I apply a pattern across multiple surfaces. This is an issue as multiple surfaces don't share the same UV space, there can be holes wanted or unwanted, and to deal with all of this, usually you have to either create an approximative surface or yeah, make a regenerative surface approach. All of these solutions are possible, but are usually dependent then on the specific data example. So I sat together with a colleague, Andrei Samsonovich, and we tried to work on an approach which is much more general and can work for any kind of data sample. And this is what we've come up with so far. So let me open the current version of the script we've been writing. So this is a Dynamo player script. I'm using alias 2021 update 2 hotfix 1. Uh, so there you can use the Dynamo player to use this script, but if you have older versions of alias, you can also just run the script from Dynamo and achieve the same results, just a little bit less convenient. So how does the script work? Uh, first, it's asking you about entities to be placed. I got two different entities here, sphere and a toro. So let's start with a sphere. Then it asks you to pick a reference surface in alias and then a bunch of points on that surface. So this is the way you can do it if you want to define your positions inside of alias. But instead of yeah, having a simple surface and the points on it to define the pattern distribution, you could also simply generate UV value pairs inside of Dynamo. But this is something I'll show later. So for now, let's just take this example here. You just create a planar surface. You put your points on that surface on, yeah, in a way where you, like, you want to distribute your pattern. And then the next thing you got to pick is a guide curve. And then a second guide curve is optional, construction point is optional, but um, in this video, I'll stick mostly to yeah, the mode of where you're using two guide curves. Uh, this one I already messed up, so I only want to have uh, one guide curve accepted and then the second guide curve except this one here above. Uh, center point not needed, what we are currently for what we currently want to do. And then I pick all the surfaces I want to apply the pattern on. Hit accept, I hit build. And what's happening now is that between the two guide curves I've selected, section planes are created. So you can, you know, both curves run from you know, left to right. And then just imagine that you create connection points between these two curves. And each of these points defines a section plane. And with these section planes, you're creating the space between the two curves is an implicit surface. And then on this implicitly defined surface, um, the UV value points you've given the algorithm is used to then create the pattern you want and distribute it on the surfaces where you want to place the pattern. So with these two curves, you're defining an implicit surface. So the width of the curves, you know, is yeah, corresponding to the horizontal lines here of your surface. And then the sections which are creating are, are referring to the vertical lengths of your surface here. Just to show you what this means, this means that if I'm picking the lower curve here and I'm moving that on here away, I'm making this implicit surface actually longer or higher, if you want to, than the original surface. And by that, you can see that the um, circle is no longer a circle, but it's getting stretched. This is something can be wanted, can be unwanted. Um, I'll also work uh, soon on an algorithm where this won't be stretched, shouldn't be too difficult. But yeah, nevertheless, I already wanted to share the current state with you. So you can also try play around with it, maybe report some bugs. Um, with these two curves and, and the mode I'm using currently, I call cut. And cut means that, well, if I'm stretching the surface in a way that the pattern would actually fall off the reference surfaces, then the resulting pattern points, pattern points are cut away. This can be wanted, can be not wanted. Um, yeah, just sharing it with you that this is one possibility on how to use it. So just undoing it here several times to get back to the original stage. 
And as I mentioned before, that the, the width of the curve is yeah, corresponding to the width of your reference surface here, which means that if I'm picking a CV here and I'm moving this one here, now the section planes again are created between the two curves are also corresponding to the length of the two curves and by that you're also changing the result of your pattern here. Again, can be wanted, can be not wanted. Um, this is just one option. And just to show you that it also works with a different example. So there created the letter A here on the left as you've seen. So what we'll do now is just take um, a different entity to place, which is the stores here, different surface, the pattern points on that surface, and again, guide curve, first the lower one, except the upper one, except construction point not needed, so I accept and enter um, an empty selection set. And now I just hit space once more to Build the whole surface and that's not working for a reason. Why is that? Well, maybe I screwed something up. Let's just try again. So we want to place this torus here. This is the reference surface. This is my pattern distribution. I want to use this lower guide curve, this upper guide curve, center point I don't want, the surfaces to pattern. Uh, maybe I messed that one up. Yeah, probably. And now you can see you have your A put on multiple surfaces. All right, so let's get uh, to a different mode the algorithm is also capable of. And for that one, I'll use their example down here. So again, planar surface, I've um, created horizontal lines with a lot of points. So uh, this time I'll just again pick a torus to be placed. I pick this one here as reference surface, this one, these ones here as my pattern points. And now I have it, uh, I want to use different reference surfaces, but again, guide curves to be picked, lower one, upper one, no center point, and these are my surfaces to pattern. And if I build here now, you will also again see what I've described earlier that the cut option is cutting away the pattern where it's not hitting your reference surfaces, right? So you got your horizontal lines, four of them, and where the torus are not projectable onto the reference surface, then they'll simply be cut away. This is something you can want, like, you know, if this is just a sheet, but if you don't want that and you actually want your whole pattern to be distributed just on the reference surfaces as best as possible, you can choose a different mode, which I call stretch and squeeze. So stretch and squeeze means that the pattern is stretched and squeezed in a way that all the pattern points are actually placed on the reference surfaces and they're adjusted in a way that they fit on there. And the way this works is that still the section planes are created but for the pattern distribution, only the real intersections of those section planes and the reference surfaces are taken into account. And then these intersections, these vertical intersections, are we treated are treated as the whole um, only these real intersections are treated as your V parameter space here going up. In the cut mode, what happens is that um, between when the, uh, when your intersection plane is not hitting reference surfaces, there will be also be a, created a point on your guide curve. And the, the missing empty space between the guide curve and the reference surfaces is filled with the blend curve. And therefore, then you get yeah, the complete height here, even though um, the, the intersection plane is not cutting all of your reference surfaces. And that's, this leads then to the cut effect but you can also, as you see, stretch and squeeze this one here. So this is, these are rather simple examples and now we'll have also a look on our web where I can show you that this one works also on more complex geometry. So this is a more complex example. It's actually a real life example of the inside of a door. And the task was to distribute a pattern across these surfaces, which have holes here and here. 
yeah, nevertheless, you want to be able to place an object on these surfaces in a defined manner. This time I'll take the approach just showing you how I'm running this one out of Dynamo without using the Dynamo player. Because, let me just get Dynamo here into the window. Some people of you might not have update to Hotfix 1 yet. So, opening the script here. And then let's start from the top here. So the entities to be placed, I'll just take again the simple sphere, send that one over to Dynamo. Um, this time I also take a different approach. I'm not using alias surfaces and alias points on that surfaces to define my UV pattern, but instead I'm just creating a rectangular grid of UV values inside of Dynamo. And as you can see, this one here, pretty easy to define that one. A uh, short, really handy uh, shortcut to know is if you shift little mouse button, uh, shift left middle mouse button click, you can move the output of a Dynamo node to a different node. So uh, I, I wish I would have known this one here before. It could have saved me a lot of time in my earlier Dynamo days. So maybe take this one here as a more expert tip. So um, I've used now yeah, that shortcut to move away all of the um, alias input from the alias surfaces and said I'm using just inside of Dynamo. I'm creating here a grid here and then um, yeah, once I run the script you'll see there will be a lot of UV pairs here to generate a 6 by 15 grid for the placement of the sphere. All right then uh, we still need the normal alias input for the guide curve so again lower one first send it over to Dynamo second guide curve upper one, send it to Dynamo, center point we don't need, surfaces to pattern, all of those, sent, and that should actually already be it. So hitting run. Because this is a more complex example, also you've seen, you know, we're using a 6 by 15 grid, so it means um, 90 entities to be placed, more complex sections to be generated, so it takes a few seconds to, to calculate it. But as you can see, it still does the job, right? So the 6U values correspond to this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 horizontal placements yep, of the spheres, and then you have like, you know, 15 spheres here from bottom to top and yeah if you don't have sufficient surfaces there they will be cut away because we're using the cut option and this is also something you know optional also as you can see here on the empty space here where you have wanted holes no spheres will be placed uh, this is also something which you can easily adjust inside of the script if this is something you don't want to and for example you can also see that here because the two endpoints are yeah just where the surfaces and so you know some of the fears drop off so you can yeah then move or adjust your curves a little bit to move inwards if you want this side here these are then adjustments you can make but yeah this shows that it also works on more complex data examples as mentioned the script is work in progress so um we'll continue to develop this one if you have got any bugs or enhancement requests just ping me you know comment on the youtube video or reach out to me on the forum and we'll um, yeah, take your feedback and see if we can incorporate it into the future versions of our script. Also to be noted, I'm not using this one here yet, but the script also delivers you the normal position on each of these faces. So if you're not placing spheres, so, but a different object which needs to be adjusted in regards of, uh, in reference to the normal, you're projecting uh, your entity on the reference surface and you want to adjust it according to the normal orientation of that surface in that point. This is also something you can yeah, utilize in the scripts already there, just not shown here yet. So I hope this helps you. Um, looking forward to see how the script develops and I hope this is something which will help you in your daily work if you want to distribute a pattern across multiple surfaces. Thanks you. Thank you for watching the video and yeah, hope to see you soon.